Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve jump game, lead code number 55. So we're given an integer array nums and you are initially positioned at the array's first index. And each element in the array represents your maximum jump length at that position. So we need to return true if you can reach the last index or false otherwise. So if the array is two, three, one, one, four, we're located at the first index. Two is our maximum jump length from here, meaning we could either jump one to get over here or we could jump from here two to get over here. If you did jump two, then you'd get here. Here we could jump one to get here. Here we could jump one to get here. And this is the last position of the array. And we wanted to know if we could get there. Clearly we can. And so that would be true. However, in this example here, three, two, one, zero, four, we are right here. We can jump either three steps to here. Well, that doesn't help because that's zero. So we'd kind of get blocked. From here, we could jump two steps to get here. Well, here you could jump one again, but then you're stuck here again. Or from here, here you could jump one and from here you have two options you could either jump two to get stuck here now or from here you could jump one and then from here again you could jump one and no matter what you do you will always get stuck at this position right here so ultimately you would return false so before I even worry about kind of visualizing this, because that visualized it pretty well in the examples, we are going to write the dynamic programming. And the reason for that is because it's actually not even the most optimal solution. The solution we'll see later is going to be significantly faster and doesn't use DP at all. So we're going to start this off with the base recursive solution. Now the time complexity of this, as we'll see, is actually exponential. It's going to be big O of the max of any of the numbers to the power of N. So it's a big value value to the power of n, it is going to be very slow and not even close to passing the cases. And the space complexity of this, it will use recursion. And so it's going to end up to be O of n. So if n is equal to the length of the numbers, then we'll define a helper function. We'll define can reach from an index i. So this function will be recursive and it's going to return true if we can reach the end from this index i and false otherwise. So our base case logically would be, okay, if i is equal to n minus one, so if we we are at the end, well, then we'd return true. Now for each jump in the range of one to nums at i plus one, one, two, up until our array value. So if we can reach there from i plus our jump, so we're jumping from our current position of i, if we can reach that, well, that means that at some point down the road, we must have hit the end. And so if we can reach it, well, then we should return true, saying that we can reach it from i. Okay, if we go through all of the jumps here and we never actually get any of those, well, then that means we couldn't reach it. We must have got stuck, so we'd have to return false. Then we would just call this function on return can reach at zero. So we start at the first index. Can we reach it at zero? This will be a very slow function to write. This is going to not even be close to passing the test cases. Let's go through this example again here, exactly with what our code is doing. So the first jump we do is one. Okay, well, same thing here. Okay, let's try jumping one. Boom we get stopped. Okay, so we kind of have to backtrack over here. And so this guy would say, okay, well, a jump of one didn't work. Let's try a jump of two. Okay, we go back over here and say, okay, let's try a jump of two. Now, this is where it gets very interesting here because we have already seen that this doesn't work. We don't have to from here say, okay, let's actually try jumping one again. No, we have already been in this position and totally exhausted the fact that this is a bad position. This index here, we know because we've already done the recursion and tried our jumps that this is a bad index. So we need to mark in our code basically the good and bad indices. So we'd make a memo, which is going to be a dictionary that has our base case and minus one is true. We can definitely make it from the end. So we change this to say if i is in the memo, then we would just return the memo at i. So if we already know whether this index is good or bad or not, well, let's return that result. Now, otherwise, if this doesn't go through, through, well, then we actually need to calculate it. And so if we get in here, so if we found we can reach it, well, then we'd want to set memo at i equal to be true. And if we get down here, in this case, you'd want to say we can't make it. Let's set that memo at i is equal to false. 
So now we don't have to keep trying these bad indices over and over again. This one here, it doesn't work from here. So if you ever get to this point, you simply just want to return the result that it's no good from here. Okay, this is actually going to dramatically pick up our speed here. So we would call this the top down DP approach, and that's via memoization. And the time complexity of this is actually going to be big O of n squared. And this one still doesn't pass the test cases because big O of n squared is still actually pretty slow. It turns turns out that there is a totally different approach to this altogether, and I'm going to show you that now. Okay, so the idea here, and it's going to take some convincing that this actually works, but it really does. You can start at the end here, and you can say, okay, well, this is currently our goal. So I kind of write this down as our goal. Can we make it to the goal? Well, yes, of course we can. We're at it. What about from over here? Can we make it to the goal? Well, yes. Our max jump of 1 plus our current index of 3, that would equal 4. So we could actually get to the goal. Okay, so actually, the new goal is just to get to where we are. So if you can get there from here, well, then this is really our new goal. Okay, how about can we get there from here? So we have a max jump of one, our current index is two, and so we can get to three. Yes, we can actually get there from here. And so this is our new goal. Okay, can we get there from here? Easily, we can get all the way to four. And so this is our goal. We would move over here and say, can we get to one? Yes, we can. We can take a jump of two from our index of zero. And so we can get there from here as well. Since our goal ultimately got set to our first index here, we would actually return true. Okay, let's do another example here. Starting at index of zero, getting all the way to the end of five would be impossible. So what you would do is kind of set your goal to be the end here, and you'd say, okay, let's say that we're right here. Well, we can get to the end because we're already at it. Okay, cool. Now can we get to the end from here? Well, we can take a max jump of nothing, and we are at index four. So the furthest we can get is where we are, which is index four. We cannot get to index five, so we can't move over the goal. What about from here? Well, same thing. We're at three. We can still only get to three, and so we can't move over the goal. Over here, same thing over here, we could get to one plus three, which is four. So we could get over here, but uh, that's not enough. So we can't actually move over our goal. We get over here, still we can't get to our goal. Our goal is kind of stuck at the end here. So since the goal is not set to the beginning, and so ultimately you'd return false. So isn't it kind of crazy that this works? This is a greedy and it's gonna be an O of N approach. It's so much simpler code. It's just a totally different way of thinking about the problem. And that's why I think it's more interesting to think about those recursive and dynamic programming solutions. Even though they're not as good, it's kind of different and more interesting ways to think about the problem. Okay, so the idea here, here is to use a greedy approach where we start at the end and the time complexity of this is going to be big O of n. We simply just go through the array backwards and the space complexity, we actually don't have to store anything at all and we'll use a loop and so there's no recursion. Okay, so we'll get n is equal to the length of the numbers and our target is equal to n minus one. So we're trying to get to the end. Now we'll go backwards for i in the range of start at n minus one and then we do minus one minus one, which says start inclusive at n minus one, we go down until minus one exclusive. So actually we're going down to zero. So the maximum jump we can take at this position is simply nums at i. So if our current index plus our max jump is at least the target, so if we can reach the target, well, we can actually get there from this index. So really the new goal is actually just to get to this current index. The target should be to get to our current index of i. That's really all the code here. It's just return that the target eventually eventually gets set to zero. If the target is zero, that means you can reach it from the beginning. Otherwise, if the target's not the beginning, you'd return false. Okay, this is gonna be way faster than those dynamic programming ones because it's just big O of N and you can see here easily the fastest solution. So drop a like if this was helpful guys. I hope it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.